Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Confex Q&A. Uh, I'm Jack Newey. I'm the event director of International Confex, and today I'm joined by Matthew Lamb from Eventos. Hi, Matthew. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Very well, thanks. Good, good. Let's get right into it. So, firstly, give me a brief overview of you. Who are you, Matthew? Uh, tell tell the uh, Confex community who you are and a bit of an overview of Eventos. I am Matthew Lamb. I'm based in Glasgow, uh, Scotland. Uh, it's very exciting to be here today and be part of the journey, um, which is really uh, going to be an exciting one. And this is Eventos, is a customer experience consultancy company that looks at everything customer journey within the festival, events and venues uh, industry. OK, so I know obviously we've met before, we've spoken before, um, so I know a little bit, but why don't you brief everybody else. Talk to me about your study and your research and, and sort of what led you into a, a career at events. When I was 16, I started the first school disco that was ever held in my school. And I walked into my head teacher's office and said, we're having a disco. And he said, no, we're not. And I said, yes, we are, because I booked the DJ. Within four weeks, we basically <laughs> sold all the tickets. And then two weeks after that, we then done one for the year above and our year. What happened with that is there was a passion that was lit up inside me and I started mm -hmm. really looking at every channel that I could to to go down the studying route of events. But as soon as I started my course, I really immersed in work experience, as it's called. There was no apprenticeships or anything like that back then. What I then found was this passion for really getting in the industry and really linking it to what I was studying. And when I done my master's, I really I done a study on world wrestling entertainment and I looked at I looked at, you know, sport entertainment and I looked at why people were buying into, you know, fake wrestling, shall we say? Yeah. And I, immediately I was getting this passion for this idea of customer customer experience. Now, this was 2015. Customer experience wasn't really something that was necessarily there in the mainstream as a discussion. So now I'm a PhD candidate. I'm on my about to enter my last year in it in customer experience within the events and tourism industry. And that is where this is event toss has really been brought up from that and other things that I'm sure we'll dive into. So now it's I, I've kind of always been in the events industry since I, the moment I started studying and I've never really came out of it and I've lectured in it as well, which was, you know, which is a great journey that you get to you get to put people on their own double-decker bus journey, as I like to say. <laughs> yeah. So talk to me about um, Around the World in 80 Events. It's quite a catchy uh, headline to, to grip people in. So yeah, explain that to me. 2018, it was a May, it was a lovely spring, summer's evening. And I walked out to my mum that was sitting in the back garden. I said, mum, I'm going round the world in 80 events. And she said, oh, here we go. And I said, this is going to happen. I wanted to be the first person that ever went to 80 events in 26 countries in the space of eight weeks and two, eight months and two weeks. There's around the world in 80 trees, there's around the world in 80 bikes, there's around the world in 80 everything, but there's not events. This is the book. This is the book. This is the journey. This has got 80 different events that happened within that time, which was all pre-pandemic. The whole journey was, you know, there was a subtitle, hashtag come on the journey. And it was this idea that it wasn't about my journey, it was about your journey. I was living my dream, but I wanted to live, I wanted you to be able to live your dream through mine to an extent, mm -hmm. inspire you to go on that journey. And I, so I went to 56 of them, met me. So I met 56 of the 80 events. I would meet with 164 different organizations, everyone from the Boston Celtics vice president, the CEOs of venues in Zurich, um, we went to uh, Bangkok, I went to the furniture show and was taken round by the CEO in Throlin. I didn't need a washing machine that day, but I just bought one. I, I And then I volunteered uh, at numerous events as well. And, and it really allowed me to, to dive into really what was the events industry? What was it like? You know, I had the ones that I volunteered. I was, I was literally able to be part of the success of the event. And then on other aspects, I was able to stand and listen at the gates when people were leaving and really listen to that roar that they had because of what an event had done to them. Or because I was able to stand at the very beginning and watch it come alive. Mm. And I think there was there was a lot of there was a lot of um, hard work that went into it. There was 49 yeah. flights, there was 14 trains, there was 23 buses, there was 
97 accommodations that you know there was so much there was a financial budget that I'd, I'd saved up all myself this was my dream and it wasn't about becoming an influencer it wasn't anything about that it was about showing how beautiful and I think that's a key word how yeah. beautiful our industry is globally but also what globally has been done that's not been done in the UK what globally has been done that uh, that you know, it's been done in the UK, not globally, and comparing and contrasting, and that's what that story is all about. That sounds really exciting. What was the uh, most obscure event you went to? The Penis Festival. Um, <laughs> so okay, you explain. This event is not what we think it is. It's a religious symbol event. It's all it's based in a shrine and a temple in Tokyo. And the reason that I say it, and the reason I say that with with the obscurity aspect of it, is it's the opposite of whatever everyone thinks. It's the most mm-hmm. beautiful religious um, event that there is, mm-hmm. and it it really allowed people to for that moment to be connected with their religion, while the tourists had it as part of a bucket list and saw it for what I just said it was. Um, and it, that for me, it really, it did kind of had a conflict and allowed me to kind of see that, you know, some things aren't what we think they are originally. And I think that's that's what this book and that's what that journey is all about, that yeah. we shouldn't just look at it as what the label says. We should actually really understand what it is. Everything from the Jakarta Jazz Festival to the first event I went to was a swimming event in New Zealand. To the last event, there was a pumpkin festival in Toronto, which was literally four years, two days ago. Um, so you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of um, it's quite appropriate that we're talking this week. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, customer journey is a huge focus of yours. Um, how important is it, and how much is it overlooked, really, by event organisers? Massively. The preparation of a customer, I think, is sometimes seen as a pre-email is seen as, uh, yeah, we'll see you there. Have a great day. Um, We can't wait to meet you. But what about the geographical research on these people? What about the demographical research? What about understanding your audience? What about really appreciating what that audience perception of your event is? When you dive into that and insight companies, you know, they create loads of reports. But what about when someone gets to that gate, who is that person and what is their beliefs and what is their values and what is their what is their understanding of that moment that they're about to immerse in and a lot of people say oh it's not really needed but if you if you understand that you understand how you're going to connect truly with your audience and your customer then you gain economically and you gain emotionally and once you gain the both of them then you build your audience and i think that is you know customer journey is not just about awareness and retention and and buying and all this element it's about how do you make them feel what's that what's that feeling you mm. know when people go to your events and people go to conferences what do they feel do they feel prepared do they feel do they feel as though they want to come back next year and if you have done your job right in customer journey then they will without question excellent so other than working with ventos Obviously, what can people do? What are some simple steps they can they can look at to uh, to change this? What strategies and things they can adopt straight away? Well, working with Eventos would be the best place. <laughs> yes, of course. The um, so what would be the strategies? The so what's your touch point analysis? What's what you know? And and people go touch point. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. Go into a cafe, and a cafe probably has four hundred touch points without even knowing. And people go four hundred. How loud's the music? What is the music? Who's the singer? Is it appropriate? There's four. And people mm. are probably going, that's not a touch point, but it is because they're calculated elements that are all taken into account. Or the coffee machine, what does it sound like? Is it a certain brand? Like, does it sound good? Is it disrupting your conversation? Now, as soon as you do a touch point analysis, you immediately understand what your customer, not what you think, but what your customer is engaging with. So that's the first thing. Second thing. What is your emotional arousal? And when I say this, people, I love it. People are like, what? What's that? What's your emotional arousal? So you go on a roller coaster ride, you jump on the mm-hmm. ride, and all of a sudden you feel scared. That's an emotion. You feel happy after it sometimes because you have went and accomplished something. But emotional arousal is all about evoking that evoking that emotion. You know, when Scotland won the World Cup one day, 
we'll all be cheering, we'll be skimming, <laughs> we'll be, you know, we'll be, we'll be ecstatic, right? Mm. It's a true fact. I didn't say in what sport, but when yeah. we won the World Cup. And I think that's really important to really appreciate, like, you know, emotional arousal. But then understand the third thing that, I, uh, that anyone should immediately do is, what's your drop? And people go, what, drop off? No, what's the drop? So you go in a nightclub. Back in the day when I was a raver, you go into the nightclub and all of a sudden the DJ is like, here we go, people. And the BPM's going faster. And the DJ's saying, put your hands up. <laughs> he has you controlled. The DJ is in control of you. And for all the rest of the night, everything the DJ is, put your hands up, here we go. Everything like that, that reaction that you are given, that's the drop. And that's what that's what companies need to realise, that these three things I've spoke about there, very briefly, are really important for you to understand. Mm-hmm. The emotional arousal, the touch point, the drop. Once you do that, then that's, that strategically, you've understood the audience's reaction and pathway of engagement. Really interesting, really interesting thing to bring into the event world. So what, what makes you guys unique? Obviously, I guess a lot of it's to do with the research uh, that you guys have to sort of back up um, your application to events. But yeah, tell tell me what is the, 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 the strongest thing uh, that people can a, gain from working with you and um, coming to your workshops, but uh, that sets you apart from everyone else? I think, I think you know, it's funny, the, work, the, the name itself, Eventos, you know, it, it Everyone sees that as events in Spanish, but it's not. Vent is to breathe. E is excellence and S is service. So we breathe excellent service. And I think when you look at it like that, we've constructed a pathway of uh, strategies and workshops that are memorable. That's what people say to me. You know, I was done a training session a month ago for 400 staff. Now, 400 staff is a lot of people. And how are you meant to engage with them? Well, easy. You get a techno song, you get 400 glow sticks, and you put them into a rave environment for that period of time. And immediately what we done was we created this 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 sheer joy, this ecstatic that people were like, I didn't expect that. So I think for uniqueness and what we do is we dive into things. So we can do everything from two-person workshops to 500 training sessions. And I think that's really important as we grow, which we are, you know, we're only a year old, then we actually have this passion for to take this as Eventos to a new level, not just training sessions, but actually what's the digital application of what we do? What's the, you know, and and I don't want to be that company that just focus on customer experience digital, because I think that there's a place for that and that's great. Mm -hmm. But I think what we do is we take a roll of wallpaper, we create a journey with it, uh, but it's what that wallpaper can then become um, from 40 meters to to actually, um, you know, actually facts and results for companies. Excellent stuff. So you'll be at Confex. Anything exciting happening at the show? I believe you'll be speaking as well. Have you got anything in store that people should look out for? Well, you know, when you come into our stall and our stand, I can promise you it's not just going to be a business card getting handed over. It's going to yeah. be you know, emotional engagement, you know, it's low. I went to, a, you know, I went to a conference last week and everyone was just after the freebies and that's great. But at the end of the day, I want people to just have a conversation and and with, you know, with each other, not just with me, but come to that conference and have conversations, seek those conversations. I sound like your marketing team now, eh? but the, <laughs> yeah, most important thing, yeah, the most important thing is when you come to our stall, we are, we're not going to have just business cards. We're going to have moments that you're going to never forget because at the end of the day, that's what working with This Is Eventos is all about. Excellent. And where can people find you if they want to get in touch? Well, uh, on the on the sphere of the internet, you can find us on thisiseventos.co.uk. All contact information there. Then also, we are building an Instagram very slowly, but at This Is Eventos. <laughs> and then on the day... On the days of the conference, which is very exciting, you can find us, of course, check your programme prior, stand K24C, and we'll be there with our big smiles and our black jumpers and uh, saying eventos. Excellent. Matthew, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and I look forward to everyone seeing you at Confex. Jack, thanks very much, and I look forward to meeting everyone at Confex as well.